So the reason I stated that is that, as I was saying before, the I mean, you you would want to, you would say that hey, why don't you why don't we offer encryption to our SNMP packets because it's clearly better, right? But in security, you don't do things just because it, it's better that way. You do things because you want to protect against specific attacks, against specific vulnerabilities, and you want to protect specific assets against those vulnerabilities. Well, if you think about it, as long as you use auth no priv and your authentication mechanism is now secure because the password is no longer sending clear text, and as long as you use a strong password, for example, then encryption is not necessarily needed if you if you just think about it. So it's only if the auth no priv has certain vulnerabilities or flaws, then you would want to use auth priv, which is clearly better from a security point of view because it also offers encryption. But remember, as I was saying, that in security you don't do things uh, the best way. Like the, the 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 you don't implement. Like if you take a protocol, you don't put something in the network and you configure that protocol to be as secure as possible, just because it's better that way. You do it only if you have to do it because you want to lower down a risk level. Because otherwise, uh, putting something complicating the network configuration adds actually, in the end, um, much more, uh, uh, adds possible other problems because maybe your support team is not able to manage, uh, monitor, investigate, and troubleshoot such configurations because they don't have the knowledge to support SNMP version 3 encryption and whatever, for example. So from the configuration steps point of view, you're going to first define a group of users and, secu and the security level. That's going to be done via the SNMP server group command, then the group name, you specify version 3, and then the security level, the one, the, one of the three options we, have, we were speaking uh, before. Then you configure the username, the, the user to be used for authentication between the manager and the agent, and you associate it with the group that you have previously configured. Because the authentication between the server and the agent is being done based on username and password, not based on groups. So then you say SNMP server user, the username, you associate it with the previously configured group name, you say version 3, and then based on the security level defined at the group level, you would have to configure either the, the authentication part, the encryption part, or none of them. So it depends. So the group is being used to define the security level of users associated with the group and then at the user level you associate the user with the group and you define the authentication and encryption algorithms to match the security level of the group. So it's plain simple. And then last, lastly you define the SNMP server by saying SNMP server host, the IP address of the SNMP server, you can actually you can optionally use the traps keyword because if you don't use the traps keyword then you're going to only be receiving SNMP get and set actions from the server but no traps will be sent to the server so you can optionally also ch choose to send traps to the server you define the version 3 and then again you're going to say I want to speak with this server by using which security level and which username so if you just take time to again look it up at the configuration, it's all going to make sense. Why do you need the group to define the security level? Why do you need the users? Because users are associated with the group and at the user level you define the authentication and encryption uh, algorithms. And then of course we have to also ultimately define the SNMP server uh, manager, its version, and of course the security level and which username to be used. Why do you define the username at the SNMP server command? Because you may have multiple users configured on the router. So the router needs to know which of those users is to be used for that specific server. So just thinking about it, it just makes sense. Again, you don't have to memorize stuff around, just know how technology works and look at the command structure one time and it's gonna stick up with you if you try to, to if you try to understand uh, logically if the configuration template is logical doesn't make sense doesn't map to the technology uh, let's say requirements and steps and functionality and yes it does 
And the last thing is going to be, of course, verification steps. So you verify the users in groups, show SNMP group, show SNMP user, and in the end you verify the configured SNMP servers via show SNMP, show SNMP host and or show SNMP uh, sessions. What I'm going to be doing now to speed up time, to speed up the, the, the class and move on, I'm going to just go on, for example, Vata2, as I was saying, configure Vata2 to be the SNMP agent, the SNMP agent, Here we go. And I'm going to send, I'm going to consider test server A to be my SNMP manager. But actually, I'm not running any kind of manager tools on the router. I'm just going to go and configure this up in here. And then I'm going to configure some debugging of SNMP to see that router 2 actually sends traps in version 3 format towards the SNMP manager. So let's go on router 2 and configure that up. Let's make sure there are no pre-built in SNMP commands. There shouldn't be, but just a confirmation. There we go. If you say show SNMP host, agent not enabled because I have not defined any hosts whatsoever. But if I define the, the SNMP manager IP address, I got to go ahead and define SNMP version 3, which requires group and user. So let's say SNMP server group, let's call it, uh, let's say, what? IT group v3, and then the security level. Let's say, for example, uh, auth. So I'm going to choose just auth, which means I'm going to provide authentication via username and password, but the password is going to be MD5 hashed and no encryption. Then I'm going to say, or let's say actually, let's say priv, not aut, for a specific use case. Let's, let's choose priv. And then define the user, SNMP server user, let's say Christian. Group to which the user belongs is belongs to the IT group. what is going to be uh, version 3 and then because it belongs to the IT group and the IT group uses a security level of priv it means that I have to configure the user Christian with both authentication and encryption parameters so let's say version 3 authenticated uh, and I'm going to use let's say MD5 with the password for the user to be SNMP pass word. And then I'm going to also use priv specifying the algorithm to be, let's say, triple this and the encryption key, which is going to be SNMP encrypt. And there we go. And li lastly, SNMP server host test server A, 172.16.10.100, optionally send traps, version 3, and configure what is the, the security level I want to speak with that server priv, and then what is the user I want to use to communicate with that server. And I want to use the user of Christian. It makes sense not to apply the group at the SNMP server host command because with the server, I'm going to make use of, of the user level defined uh, authentication and encryption keys and algorithms which are not defined at the group level. At the group level, I just define a security level but not a security characteristics like what are the algorithms and the passwords to be used for authentication and encryption. So if you say show SNMP, group there we go i have the it group which uses a security model of okay i have i have not removed the previous command i'm not sure if this is expected as the design of the conversion or not from my point of view, it doesn't make sense to have two commands, so for the same group defined with two different security methods. 
So from my point, it doesn't make sense. I'm not sure if this is expected behavior or not. Let me remove this command, which was initially configured. And let's say show SNMP group again. And there we go, the IT group belongs, has a security level, security model of V3 priv, which means both authentication and encryption. Show SNMP. And by default, I'm not gonna get into any of the details, by, but, but by default, members of this group can read but cannot write to the router. This means that the manager can use uh, get actions but not set actions. Show us an MP user. There we go, I have a Christian user. Then you have the protocol to be, the uh, protocol to be used for authentication, protocol to be used for encryption to which group does it belong to, and what you don't see in here is the encryption and authentication key strings, which have been configured by, com by SNMP server user command. And this is by design, it's not a bug. It's meant to be hidden, so it, it's not visible or show commands. If you say show run, include SNMP, Doesn't, it's not even displayed in show run at all. So if you say show run all, include the SNMP user, likewise it's not there. So once you have configured the SNMP user command, it's no, it's no longer visible in show run, it's only visible in show SNMP user. And this is by design for security reasons. Because likewise, you don't want that if somebody copies the configuration file from point A to point B, you don't want in that configuration file for this command to show up in clear text. Because at that point, all of the efforts of SNMP v3 are in vain, because if somebody grabs their hands on the configuration file, then you're gonna see both the encryption and authentication algorithm and the keys, and then all of this, you know, added security features for nothing. And then show SNMP host, the last command. And there we go, I'm going I'm using uh, that SNMP server. And for traps, I'm using UDP port 162. And I'm going to speak with the server by using the username of Christian, which is, which is using a security model of version 3 priv, which means both authentication and encryption. Now let's say show SNMP traps, I think. Show SNMP. Sessions, for example. Configure terminal. Let's say SNMP server enable traps. And let's enable traps for, for example, for what? SNMP link up, link down. So what I want is whenever a link goes up or down, I want the router to generate an SNMP trap to its configured servers, which is test server A. Interface, let's say loopback zero. SNMP trap link status. So I'm enabling at the interface level so that the link status is can be can be uh, can be intercepted by SNMP so that whenever the link goes up or down, is going the router is going to send a trap to the to its configured server. Let's say debug SNMP now. 
to confirm that I'm going to send SNMP traps to the server, it's debug SNMP packets. Let's make sure I have debugging enabled at the console, show logging. So at the console, I have disabled logging. Let's enable debugging level, conf t, logging, console debugging, and of course, logging on. Let's say on debug ARP. I don't want to see any more ARP packets. Show debug. I should have only the SNMP trap uh, being enabled. There we go. Debug SNMP packet, and pretty much that should be it. Now let's go on the loopback and shut down shut the loopback. Shut down, and let's see what happens. They go to the syslog message as expected, and also an SNMP trap should be likewise be triggered. It takes a couple of uh, it takes a bit of time for the agent to actually uh, generate the trap towards the manager. Show SNMP. Stats. Not OID. There was one more command which doesn't seem to be available in this code. So I have sent zero packets to the SNMP manager. Show run include SNMP. Let's shut down another link. Let's shut let's shut down gig01. Maybe the loopback being shut down doesn't trigger anything. SNMP trap link status and let's say shut down and let's say to wait for the log message to be sent to, to the SNMP server do show SNMP it says zero packets sent zero dropped Do I have a route to that destination? There we go. It was being sent. Then it was shut down. So do you on debug all? I remember I had the same problem in the in the in the CCN security bootcamp. It says this NMP version two trap. Because actually this is only a debug output. If you do a packet capture, it's gonna be an SNMP v3. Because actually, SNMP v3 didn't change how trap worked, so I'm still going to use the same format of v2. Because so it's only a debugged output. So I, the only way to confirm that's an SNMP v3 packet is by actually performing a packet capture. Because we know I have configured SNMP version 3. We looked at the show commands; it was showing up to be version 3 configured. But at the debug level, it's, it says v2 trap because v3 did not change how SNMP. Uh, functionality works like the set get or you know trap trap methods did it just add a security features so probably you know it's just a leftover from Cisco that as as long as you send traps at the debug level is not is gonna say it's gonna shop as a v2 trap not as a v3 trap because v3 didn't bring any changes to the trap mechanism which is built in SNMP either way we see it has worked and there we go so like I said, if you say show SNMP, then you should see now statistics that I'm going I sent four packets. Okay.